This is the book, Feeling is the Secret, by Neville Goddard. And I'm going to read you the foreword. This book is concerned with the art of realizing your desire. It gives you an account of the mechanism used in the production of the visible world. It is a small book, but not slight. There is a treasure in it, a clearly defined road to the realization of your dreams. Were it possible to, conviction, to carry convictions to another by means of reasoned arguments and detailed instances, this book would be many times its size. It is seldom possible, however, to do so by means of written statements or arguments, since to the suspended judgment it always seems plausible to say that the author was dishonest or deluded, and therefore his evidence was tainted. Consequently, I have purposely omitted all arguments and testimonials and simply challenged the open-minded reader to practice the law of consciousness as revealed in this book. Personal success will prove far more convincing than all the books that could be written on the subject. Neville. Chapter 1. Law and Its Operation The World and All Within It is man's conditioned consciousness objectified. Consciousness is the cause as well as the substance of the entire world. So it is to consciousness that we must turn if we would discover the secret of creation. Knowledge of the law of consciousness and the method of operating this law will enable you to accomplish all you desire in life. Armed with a working knowledge of this law, you can build and maintain an ideal world. Consciousness is the one and only reality, not figuratively, but actually. This reality may, for the sake of clarity, be likened unto a stream which is divided into two parts, the conscious and the subconscious. In order to intelligently operate the law of consciousness, it is necessary to understand the relationship between the conscious and the subconscious. The conscious is personal and selective. The subconscious is impersonal and non-selective. The conscious is the realm of effect. The subconscious is the realm of cause. These two aspects are the male and female divisions of consciousness. The conscious is male. The subconscious is female. The conscious generates ideas and impresses these ideas on the subconscious. The subconscious receives ideas and gives form and expression to them. By this law, first conceiving an ideal and then impressing the ideal conceived on the subconscious, all things evolve out of consciousness. And without this sequence, there is not anything made that is made. The conscious impresses the subconscious, while the subconscious expresses all that is impressed upon it. The subconscious does not originate ideas, uh, but accepts as true those which the conscious mind feels to be true, and in a way known only to itself, objectifies the accepted ideas. Therefore, through his power to imagine and feel and his freedom to choose the ideal he will entertain, man has control over creation. Control of the subconscious is accomplished through control of your ideas and feelings. The mechanism of creation is hidden in the very depth of the subconscious, the female aspect or womb of creation. The subconscious transcends reason and is independent of induction. It contemplates a feeling as a fact existing within itself and on this assumption proceeds to give expression to it. The creative process begins with an ideal and its cycle runs its course as a feeling and ends in a volition to act. Ideals are impressed on the subconscious through the medium of feeling. No ideal can be impressed on the subconscious until it is felt, but once felt, be it good, bad, or indifferent, it must be expressed. 
Feeling is the one and only medium through which ideals are conveyed to the subconscious. Therefore, the man who does not control his feelings may easily impress the subconscious with undesirable states. By control of feeling is not meant restraint or suppression of your feeling, but rather the disciplining of self to imagine in, and entertain only such feelings as contribute to your happiness. Control of your feeling is all... I'll go to the next page. All important to a full and happy life. Never entertain an undesirable feeling, nor think sympathetically about wrong in any shape or form. Do not dwell on the imperfection of yourself or others. To do so is to impress the subconscious with these limitations. What you do not want done unto you, do not feel that it is done unto you or another. This is the whole law of a full and happy life. Everything else is commentary. Every feeling makes a subconscious impression, and unless it is counteracted by a more powerful feeling of an opposite nature, must be expressed. The dominant of two feelings is the one expressed. I am healthy is a stronger feeling than I will be healthy. To feel I will be is to confess I am not. I am is stronger than I am not. What you feel you are always, what you feel you are always dominates what you feel you would like to be. Therefore, to be realized, the wish must be felt as a state that is, that is rather than a state that it is not. Sensation precedes manifestation and is the foundation upon which all manifestation rests. Be careful of your moods and feelings, for there is an unbroken connection between your feelings and your visible world. Your body is an emotional filter and bears the unmistakable marks of your prevalent emotions. Emotional disturbances, especially suppressed emotions, are the causes of all diseases. To feel intensely about a wrong without voicing or expressing that feeling is the beginning of dis-ease, dis-ease in both body and environment. Do not entertain the feeling of regret or failure for frustration or detachment from your objective results in disease. Think feelingly only on the state you desire to realize, feeling the reality of the state sought and living and acting on that conviction is the way of all seeming miracles. All changes of expression are brought about through a change of feeling. A change of feeling is a change of destiny. All creation occurs in the domain of the subconscious. What you must acquire, then, is a reflective control of the operation of the subconscious, that is, control of your ideas and feelings. Chance or accident is not responsible for the things that happen to you, nor is predestined fate the author of your fortune or misfortune. Your subconscious impressions determine the condition of your world. The subconscious is not selective. It is impersonal and no respecter of persons. The subconscious is not concerned with the truth or falsity of your feeling. It always accepts as true that which you feel to be true. Feeling is the ascent of the subconscious to the truth of that which is declared to be true. Because of this quality of the subconscious, there is nothing impossible to man. Whatever the mind of man can conceive and feel as true, the subconscious can and must objectify. Your feelings create the pattern from which your world is fashioned, and a change of feeling is a change of pattern.